Now, let's see the past exam question for that. And this question is called the Ecomar Company. Now, this question, as we can say, five marks. Now, what we need to do in the SBI exam, I always tell my students, you will need to use three steps approach. Firstly, in your answer, you will need to quote the IFRS general requirements and the application and the impact on the fast reporting. Now, we're told that the company will have to vacate its currently leased office building and at the event, the lease has two years to run, which means you need to pay the rental payment for two years, at a rent of 600,000 per annum. Uh, the discount rate for that is the pre-tax discount rate 5%. So this means that if I have to exercise or to fulfill that contract, the cost to me will be, for now, I will need to pay 600. And in one year later, I will need to pay another 600. However, discounted in today's terms, which means we need to calculate uh, the unavoidable costs in present value terms, we divide this into one plus the pre-tax discount rate for a power of one. Okay, so we plot them together, in other words. Now, so this means that if I were to fulfill that contract, I would need to pay a total of $1,171,49 there. Now, if I were to cancel the contract, so the full rental is still payable on cancellation. We still have to pay $1.1 million for that. Now, moving on. The head lease permits subletting, which means that even though we pay the rental payment, we don't really have to get into it. We don't really have to uh, simply paying the rental payment and receive nothing, because we can sublet to others, sublease to another party. Now, with a rental of four hundred thousand dollars payable in advance, so this means that I can get the income of 400 or 400,000 and in one year's time another 400,000. Again, of course, we'll need to discount at the pre-tax discount rate for a power of one because that's for the next year. But because the our company estimates there's only 40% probability that we can extends the sub lease at the same rental for the second year, which means in year one. So this means that we'll need to apply the best estimates for that, timing by $400 there by 40%. So which will give us the benefit that we could get would be $0.5 million here, which means 552,381. So this means that if I were to exercise the contract, I'll have to pay 1.17 million. But uh, with the benefit that could be net off against our unavoidable costs, so the total losses that we can suffer will be only 619,048. If I were to net off these two all together, and this will give me that. So I will need to book or to recognize to debit expense of 619,048 and to credit the provision liability. Okay, and of course, this will increase the expense as well as the liability in my conclusion paragraph here. Now, of course, the final paragraph there, the cost of moving to the green building are estimated to be one million, and the cost of terminating the lease in two years are negligible. This means that if I were to compute the cost of fulfilling that contract, it should be the lower of costs to exercise that contract or to continue with that contract and the penalty. So which figure is lower, so we use which one. So of course, so in this particular case, it seems to me that if I were to cancel this contract, I would still have to pay the 1.17 of a rental payment. It seems to me it's like the penalty. So other penalties would be negligible. So this means that 117149 will be less than 117.49 plus additional penalties. And of course, 
will like to use this as the unavoidable cost to fulfill that contract to net off any benefit so that the total provision liability here would just be 61948. However, we're also told in the final paragraph that the cost of moving would just be 1 million and this would be unavoidable again. So this means that on top of this, we'll need to plus 1 million. So that would give me 1619 and 48 would be our total provision liability. So this is a whole picture of the case. Now, if I were to pick up five marks out of these information, so the best way is to write five simple sentences. Now, splitting that into firstly, the IFAS requirement. You don't really have to quote the exact number of the IAS number 37, but uh, what you need to do is to say to the examining team that the onerous contract is measured by determining the present value of the unavoidable costs, and you need to net off the expected benefit, as I said before, using a pre-tax rate when you are determining the present value. And related to application, you will need to demonstrate your understanding that how much we need to pay, what will be the benefit, what will be the total provision for this particular case, and extra provision that we need to add in. So the conclusion paragraph, for example, impacting on the financial statement. So just write five simple sentences and you will get reasonable marks in this example. I hope you find this section useful. Just a brief introduction of myself. My name is Steve Chan, the fellow member of ACCA and a member of ACA. And I've published four accounting books related to IFIs. I'm also a technical writer for ACCA AB Magazine. I'm also the exam marker at the Professional Accountancy Body. With my years of experience, I can help you pass your ACCA exams very easily. Good luck and look forward to seeing you in the future studies. APC, accounting for your future.